Welcome to EdScoop TV. I'm Wyatt Cash, and we're here at the CETA Leadership Summit. And joining us now is uh, the Executive Director of CETA, Tracy Weeks. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Wyatt. So I know it's been a busy couple of days for you, but uh, do me a favor and tell us a little bit about among the various initiatives that CETA has been working on. Uh, which are the ones that you're most excited about for CETA members and the ed tech community at large? That's like asking me to pick my favorite child, it right? Would be. <laughs> um, well, I will tell you, one of the things that I love that CETA does with the resources that we produce and the things that we do in terms of bringing people together is in the space of education technology, the individuals who work in that space often have to bridge the conversations between the deeply technical side of education with the instructional side of education, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. And so I think you will see that reflected in the resources that CETA has produced over the last year. Not only have we um, released um, information around Wi-Fi leadership um, for state leaders, we've talked about procurement, which is never that exciting a topic, except that when you think about what states are doing with it and using state leadership as an opportunity to um, get more value, get better deals for districts, I think that's exciting. But then we've also done a tremendous amount of work around digital instructional materials, looking at their quality, and also looking at the accessibility and making sure that um, all materials that our students are, are engaging with are accessible to everyone. And in fact, it has had us change our practice because as we started advocating for accessible materials for all, we realized that ours weren't necessarily. So now it is starting to change our practice in the way we actually develop tools and resources for the field. Mm -hmm. And as you think uh, ahead to next year and beyond, what are a couple of the key priorities that uh, you'll be focusing on in particular? Absolutely. Well, in addition to our continued work on instructional materials and broadband leadership, we're going to be taking a very close look at the role of interoperability. Mm -hmm. And while this has been a topic with many ed tech leaders for a while, we're very interested in how we move the conversation from how do we use interoperability of applications, tools, what have you, to do the same things that we've always done in education, just maybe better and online and shifting that to how do we leverage that technology and the interconnectedness of things to actually change what we're doing with teaching and learning mm. and do things differently for students. Mm -hmm. um, and as you think about the ed tech trends more broadly, mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering what, what are you paying particular attention to that you think is going to have a significant impact on uh, schools and education in the coming years that uh, uh, you believe will be an important thing to follow? Well, one of the things that we do at CETA is keep a close eye on what is happening at the federal level and then what impact that has at the state level. So, of course, we continue to monitor and um, provide resources around the state ESSA consolidated plans. We look at what budgeting is going to be available mm -hmm. to states. Um, and then we're also keeping a close eye on what's happening with potential changes around E-rate with the FCC. So these are all things that we're keeping a very close eye on because changes in those could definitely change the way that states implement. Mm -hmm. And I'll put you on the spot a little bit. Uh, as you think about all the conversations you heard at this particular leadership summit, what's one or two things that you kind of were struck by, surprised by, that uh, you came away with that um, for those that weren't able to make the summit, might find interesting. Right. Well, it's, it's been interesting because the focus of this summit has been personalized learning, and we've certainly talked about it from uh, a number of lenses, um, whether that's the instructional lens, whether it's the more technical end, the policy piece of it. We've looked at it in terms of what it means for rural schools. Um, but I think what's clear to me is that states are trying to chip away at this problem but that we are still struggling as a field, I think, to come up with that common definition, common goal. Uh, personalized learning can often mean things like blended learning to one group. Mm. Um, it might mean um, you know, self-paced learning. It might mean online learning. What does it mean in your traditional face-to-face -face classroom? And so I think the field is still trying to come up with a common definition that really means the same thing to everyone. Mm -hmm. 
And we've been having that conversation for a while, but it seems that we're still having that conversation. Mm -hmm. Well, Tracy, I thank you for coming by uh, in the middle of your busy schedule here to visit with us and talk a little bit about some of the insights that you've been gleaning from uh, the needs and, uh, and also the work of a lot of state education technology directors across America. So thanks for being with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Look for more of our coverage at edscoop.com. I'm Wyatt Cash. Thanks for watching.